Um, what I'm going to talk about is our research entitled Severity Prediction for COVID-19 Patients Using Recurrent Neural Network. As we are already aware of, COVID-19 pandemic has posed enormous burden on the global healthcare system and threatened the health of tens of millions of people. To fight against the pandemic, we came up with the research questions to investigate different outcomes of COVID-19 patients. So an important question is, which patient will be a mild case or a severe case, which can be very useful information for healthcare providers to plan proactively. There have been many predictive models and studies that predict pre progression to severe status of COVID-19 patients. And some of them actually achieved good performance in terms of area on their curve generally higher than 0.7. Frequently used variables of those models include comorbidities, age, sex, and lab test results, such as lymphocyte count, C-reactive protein, and imaging feature, for example, CT. So generally, if there is a COVID-19 patient, that patient is admitted to the hospital, and then several variables were generated, such as lab test results, vital signs, and imaging features, which can be used in predictive models, were generated. But those variables, however, are available after the patient was conducted with those several tests, which can take some time. This leads us to a research question, how can we make prediction early? So our goal is to build a model to predict severity of COVID-19 patients at the time point earlier than the existing model. In order to make the, a model to predict, the required data are, should, al should also be available at the time of prediction. So among a lot of variables we can we use, we focus on the EHR data, which are available before the patient was conducted with tests or even before the admission to the hospital. So we utilize the EHR data in the study, and our specific goal is to build, build a model to pre predict a severity of the COVID-19 patient using EHR data. EHR data of a patient can be represented by sequential order. By treating each visit of a patient as a bag of medical concepts, contained such as drug, procedure, and diagnosis, for example, in this figure, docetaxel pulmonary um, scanning and type 2 diabetes mellitus, we can obtain time-aware representation of the EHR data. Um, recurrent neural network has been widely used for modeling sequential data, such as natural language and speech recognition. For example, in this figure, the words in the sentence, what time is it? are sequentially fed into the RNN, and, and the last output of the RNN has the sequential information of all the words in the sentence. Similarly, if we use the EHR data instead of the set words in the sentence, where visits replace the words in the sentence, the output of the RNN has the information of all the past visits of the patient. Going further with that idea, we developed an RNA model to predict the severity of COVID-19 patients. This figure depicted the model, our model structure. We used a gated recurrent unit, also known as GRU, which is a kind of RNA variance, takes COVID-19 patients' EHR data as inputs and outputs the hidden status of the hidden state of the patient. Then we generated the patient vector by feeding the last hidden states of the, of the patient, which is demographic information vector, to a single neural network dense layer. In order to obtain the risk, of, risk score of patient, which is just a number between zero and one, we apply a logistic regression to the patient vector. For more technical detail, see, uh, see our preprint version at the last page of the slide. Um, for more efficient training and improving the performance of the model, we, use, uh, we also use medical concept embedding. 
a medical concept of embedding projects a medical concept into a lower dimensional vector space so that the semantic meaning of the concept can be captured in the vector. Simply using low raw input of the EHR data leads to a high dimensional input, which can, which can be inefficient for training. But like in this figure, by putting another embedding layer between the raw input and the RNA model, we can obtain a lower dimensional representation of the visit. And the embedding layer can be pre-trained for further improving the performance. Um, the COVID-19 cohort using the study was identified as patient 18 years or older than that who were hospitalized and tested positive for the COVID-19 test within 21 days before or during their hospitalization period. The patient also must have at least one visit record in Columbia's Columbia University's Irving Medical Center prior to March 1st of 2020. And we obtained all historical condition concepts and demographic information prior to the hospital admission due to the infection of COVID-19 or the identified patient in the cohort by, its, by their longitudinal order. Among COVID-19 patients, we identified severe patient as the patient who had at least one of the events among mechanical ventilation, tracheostomy, or deaths during hospitalization. Those three events were chosen based on the severity score of the World Health Organization's ordinary scale for clinical improvement. Basic characteristics of the COVID-19 cohort are shown in, the, in this table. And there are 2,498 patients in total, including about 20% of severe patients. Senior patients were about 56% and 48% of the patients were male patients. We measure the prediction performance of the RNN model and baselines based on five-fold five -fold cross-validation AUC, area under curve. Logistic regression and multi-layer perceptrons are used as baseline with their three different conditions. Without using embedding layer, with using randomly initialized embedding layer, and with using pre-trained embedding. For the RNN model, we only implemented the model with two conditions, with using randomly initialized embedding and with using pre-trained embedding, since it's impossible to train without embedding a layer due to the high dimensionality of the data. As a result, the, the RNN model outperforms other baselines showing the best performance of 0.86 in the, in the RNN model with pre-trained embedding. The model also showed a com comparable performance to other aforementioned existing model, which showed AUC between 0.7 and 0.9. And the model showed improved performance with pre-trained medical concept embedding, as you uh, talked in the previous slide. The predicted risk score by the model showed proper characteristics to present to represent severity of COVID-19 patient. Uh, the left figure here showed distributions of different percentile groups of the patient based on the severity score. We can see that the median severity score increased with higher percentile groups of the patient, COVID-19 patient. The right figure showed that the predicted risk score showed better performance than age and total hospital visit count, which can be another reasonable predictors for risk prediction of COVID-19. The green curve, which indicates risk score, show better area on the curve than red and blue curve, which indicates age and total visit count respectively. And for further investigation of the predicted risk score, we plotted patient predicted risk score with their conditions such as uh, age, total hospital visit counts, and their outcome status. We can see in the left figure that risk score increased with increasing age and this, this positive relationship between two variables is statistically significant. We also can see that in the right figure that the severe patient showed higher risk score and also the relationship between those two variables is also st statistically significant. However, in the, the middle figure says there is no meaningful relationship between uh, total hospital visit counts and the and severity risk score and the relationship is uh, statistically significant. 
And the, in, in real world application, the time required to make predictions is very kind of important for prediction of single patient. The RNA model requires only about 0.03 seconds, which can predict the total COVID-19 patient in Columbia Medical Center within a few minutes. So we can say that the model showed feasibility to be applied to real-time prediction tests. We additionally visualize the patient vector on two-dimensional two-dimensional plot using uniform manifold approximation and projection. We call a label patient based on their sex, age, and comorbidities to see if there are any meaningful cluster of the patient. Sex showed very clear cluster. We can see in the left figure, we can see that two clear clusters labeled by green and red color, um, which indicates male and female, respectively. However, um, age did not show any clear cluster as you see in the right figure. Uh, we also chose two common comorbidities among COVID-19 patients in Columbia University Hospital Medical Center, renal failure and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Then again, we color label the patient to see if there are any recognizable clusters based on the chosen comorbidities. The figure ACE are the visualization of the patient vector of male COVID-19 patient, and the figure BDF here are the visualization of the patient vector of female COVID-19 patient. You can see that the figure ACE are basically the same plot, and the figure BDF are the same as well. The only difference is the color, color labeling based on the comorbidities. The figures C and D showed visualization of male and female patient with color, color labeling with, with respect to the existence of renal failure. And the figure E and F showed visualization of male and female patient with labeling with respect to the existence of type diabetes mellitus. However, no, no recognizable clusters were found. So uh, originally, we expected to subtype COVID-19 patient using the patient vector. But what this result suggests is that future works will be needed for subtyping COVID-19 patients. So summarizing all, in this study, we developed a, on a, an RNA model to predict risk for a COVID-19 patient at early time point using EHR data. The developed model can be applied to general population since it does not require any variables that are available after the hospital admission. And the predicted risk score prop can properly represent patient characteristics so that it can help hospital triage COVID-19 patients. Um, thank you for your attention. This study was conducted by five others, including Jay Lee, Dr. Casey Ta, Dr. Jian Kim, Dr. Kong Liu with the supervision of Dr. Chun Wang. And the source code is available at the URL and you can find uh, more details and technical uh, de description and technical details at the URL of the preprint. Um, two others, including Jay, me, Jay Lee, and Dr. Liu are here and we are happy to answer any questions if you have. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Jay. Uh, if I could lead off with a quick question. Um, to what extent can you apply this in a forward-looking um, manner? So a new patient comes into the hospital tomorrow. Is this algorithm ready to, to do an assessment of their uh, predicted severity? Um, so by using our model, we don't this model doesn't require any uh, test results after um, lab test, sophisticated lab test results. So if the hospital has EHR data of the patient, we, we, they can apply the model to predict how severe this patient will be in the future and then helpful to triage the patient in the, in the future. That's, yeah. I, I guess what I'm asking is, is the hospital um, planning to implement anything like this? Oh. Um, um, so, so this is calm. Uh, I think we are actually collaborating with hospital right now, trying to deploy the model. Um, actually, the more important part is not for an individual patient. Is you know, since our model can be applied to the general population, 
you know, we, we don't require any, you know, lab test after the patient is admitted. We only need the electronic health record data. So if we can deploy the model and the hospital can have a, you know, better overview about, you know, our patients, what, what is the, you know, percentage of the patients who are likely to develop into the severe status of the COVID-19. But we are still working on that part. We try to, uh, you know, uh, the important part is the um, engineering, you know, how can we really deploy the model into the system.